Prime Minister of Ireland used today, St. Patrick's Day, the holiday, to defend the history of Irish immigration and immigration more broadly, as Donald Trump stands somewhat awkwardly nearby, as you're gonna see in this video. It's fitting that we gather here each year to celebrate St. Patrick and his legacy. He too, of course, was an immigrant. And though he is, of course, the patron saint of Ireland for many people around the globe, is also a symbol of, indeed, the patron of immigrants. Here in America, new great country, 35 million people claim Irish heritage, and the Irish have contributed to the economic, social, political, and cultural life of this great country over the last 200 years. Ireland came to America because, deprived of liberty, deprived of opportunity, of safety, of even food itself, the Irish believed, and four decades before Lady Liberty lifted her lamp, we were the wretched refuse on the teeming shore. We believed in the shelter of America, in the compassion of America, in the opportunity of America. We came and we became Americans. There's one of two things happening. Um, when I shot in and looked at Trump's face for that whole minute and a half or minute and 10 seconds of him listening to him speak, he's either thinking, I wanna kill this guy, <laughs> or he's thinking, I don't know what he's saying. I wish he'd stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know I which one, one it is. He's like, I thought the same thing for a second. How long before he stops talking? Because he lost me a long time Boy, ago. Well, these foreigners, I can't understand <laughs> one of their fucking words. <laughs> these foreigners with their accents, huh? Yeah. Come on. Which country is this again? I mean, he's white, but he still sounds funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and as Jimmy pointed out during the video, he's really sticking it to him. I mean, the teeming shore and Lady Liberty, Liberty. lifting her lamp and everything. Yeah. Uh, the second a foreign leader adds any amount of poetry, it's to stick it to Donald Trump. And I think Donald Trump felt stuck too, because of course the message there is America does have a tradition of, of two things at the same time. One, uh, growing stronger as a result of bringing new people, new cultures in, that's what, that's what we are, that's what we have become. But at the same time, always, always resisting it always resenting the new group, feeling like they'll never actually assimilate even though every group eventually assimilates. And so we've had that weird tense mix. And the people in whichever time is the present who hate the new group that's coming in can never look back at the history and realize what they represent. They can never see how historically wrong they are. And Donald Trump is that person in 2017. He is the leader of that movement. And so of course he doesn't like the reminder that the Irish who were hated eventually assimilated. The Italians who were hated eventually assimilated. The Germans took over half the country basically. That's what we are as a country. And to have it reminded to him in front of everyone with cameras rolling seems to have made him a little bit There's a pretty good chance that many people don't know that there were struggles whenever new immigrants came in and there was these pushbacks on all them. They're thinking, oh, this is a new thing. These damn immigrants are coming to take over our country and they're coming aggressively because they've been told that so many times. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you talk about or if they read, uh, about any struggles with any of these new immigrants that look not scary, then they'll go, oh, it was easy for them. They just came in and enrolled and it was perfectly fine because we're America and you know, we invited them in and they got along just fine. It was no problem, no violence, no crime, nothing. It was great. They're yeah. white. Yeah. So we had signs that said no Irish need apply. Who gives a shit? So what? They were white. They could easily assimilate and blend in. We didn't know. That's yeah, I mean, too, the Irish had it really hard for a long time. And like, that's why I know exactly what it's like to be black. <laughs> exactly. Because my Soon grandpa couldn't get a job. Couldn't get a job. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Go ahead. And look, the, the history of uh, of whiteness in America is really interesting in that like even groups like the Italians and the, the Irish at one point weren't considered white. Well, they call uh, them Europeans. WAPs, right? So Italians, exactly. are what, and that stands for? Without papers. Without papers. Exactly, yeah. And that's why they call Mexicans wetbacks, mm -hmm. because they swim over, right? Yeah. Uh, so it's all about how you emanate without papers. That, they, they, they tar you with whatever your experience was coming. They here. call the Irish mix because we like to go to McDonald's. <laughs> I you didn't know that one. Like you guys are so foolish. <laughs> um, Obviously, the Italians, they speak English. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. And the Italians came here and they're, they're mostly criminals and we let them in. Yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, look at the mafia. They, they got worse when they got here, though. Yeah. I've noticed that. I watched Sopranos. But um, yeah, so look, I'm glad that uh, 
there's always there's going to be tense relationships between the US and other countries for at least four years now. We just accept that. And uh, different countries are going to deal with it in different ways. But I like that countries like, like Ireland, the leader of Ireland, isn't going to back down. They're not going to pretend to not have the values they do simply because they're in the room with Donald Trump. And I hope, it's a small hope, I don't think it's going to happen, but I hope that eventually, like you start to be affected by the people that you're in the room with. And maybe if he spends enough time with responsible leaders of countries, maybe a little bit of it can rub off on him. He has to pay attention, he has to listen. Yeah. I'm leaning more towards he didn't know what was going on. He didn't know. He had like manamana, like <laughs> yes. in his mind. I don't even think he's listening. I don't, no. really, I don't even think he's listening when people are talking. He's yeah. thinking about, oh, well, I got a golf course in Ireland, I think. I think I can go golfing. Yeah. Yeah. If, if, he, if he tweeted it, if uh, Prime Minister tweeted that quickly and angrily, he'd be like, oh, now I know what you said. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's what he meant. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. And look, looming in the background are concerns about American immigration policy and how we deal with other countries to get them to, to deal with uh, large groups of refugees is not just the problem of the last few years. There's been major problems um, with uh, people dying trying to cross over the Mediterranean from North Africa. Obviously, Middle Eastern refugees, refugees from other parts of Africa. It's Syria, clearly millions of people. All of those are problems that we have been dealing with and will continue to. But we also reported less than a week ago about the looming massive famine in Africa and Middle East. And that could potentially lead to hundreds of thousands or millions of additional refugees. We don't know which countries they're gonna come from, which countries they're gonna go to, but it is going to require international assistance. And at the same time that Donald Trump is cutting US foreign money going to foreign donations and charity work and things like that, and showing that he personally is not interested in refugees or immigrants coming in. I mean, that's dangerous. We're talking about a lot of people's lives on the line and, and hopefully the Irish philosophy wins out in this one case. Let's put some watchers on the wall, investigative journalists to run down the Trump administration and the establishment. You can make that happen, tytnetwork.com slash go.